Joseph Kursky here. Let's get weird. Let's talk about Weird Earth, exploring the Earth with interesting, bizarre, and odd imagery. Take a look at this image. Hmm, Socotra Island. Some say it's the most alien-looking place on Earth. Take a look at these trees. Wow, that's fascinating. Where is Socotra? Why and how do these trees grow there? Let's take a look at this one. The Rishat structure, the Eye of the Earth in Mauritania. Why does this look so bizarre? Fascinating. Where is that structure? Why are its origins still a bit mis mysterious? Take a look at this. A cry for help, or an ABBA song. See the SOS here? But also it's repeated there, and also it's more faintly repeated right there. Hmm. Fascinating. Why would someone draw that? Why do people create drawings on the landscape that can only be fully appreciated from above? Right? From the, fr from the surface, you would hardly even know. You probably wouldn't even know that it's there. What do you notice about the language of the text, the street names, and the landscape that give clues about the location of this image? Examining the Earth with imagery can be a powerful resource in geography, biology, environmental studies, earth science, and in other courses. Examining imagery can be easily done through the use of ArcGIS Online. The above images are included in an investigation I entitled Weird Earth. This investigation includes the images above, as well as a giant lizard, mazes, an erupting volcano, the walled city in the mist, and much more. Why Weird Earth? First, fascinating patterns, places, and phenomena abound on our planet, and some are just plain weird. Examining the bizarre is an excellent way of sparking student interest. As images are examined, the door for inquiry is opened. What physical and environmental factors cause the land and vegetation to look as it does? What do human-created objects on the landscape say about the culture and language there? What will these images look like tomorrow? In 100 years? In 200 years? Second, I wanted to illustrate that the presentation mode in ArcGIS Online is an effective and easy-to-use technology to teach such concepts. The presentation is dynamic. You can change the scale and base maps from satellite image to topographic maps, street maps, and much more, while posing questions fostering deeper inquiry into places and the processes at work behind those places. For example, when you engage students in examining Socotra using the, uh, the slide that I s showed you earlier, zoom in to examine hills versus valleys and the amount of tree cover on each. Let's go back to that slide so I can show you what I mean. Right, we can examine the Socotra Islands close up. Why does it look the way it does? Why does the vegetation grow there? Here's a village. What, is, what kind of village pattern do we see there? Zoom out until someone recognizes the island's location. Then discuss the effect of isolation, latitude, and altitude on the vegetative cover, and why one-third of the species on, so on the Socotra Islands are endemic to those islands. So now you know where it is. Change the base map to topographic to determine the height of the mountains and the depth of the valleys. You can add ecoregions and climate map layers and discuss how these influence the bizarre trees and other species on the island. You can add a population layer and discuss the settlement pattern of the island. Thus, these are by no means static slides. Even calling them slides is really a misnomer. Even better, create your own investigations focused on other processes, specific themes, specific regions, or your own community. What do you consider unique or weird about your own community? Hmm, you might get some interesting responses from the students. How might you use the concept of Weird Earth in your own teaching and learning? How can you use ArcGIS online to investigate what is strange and interesting about your own community? Mm -hmm.